Hello and welcome to the fourth and last part of the VCO builds of modular in a week where I build a modular in a week. So we've built three VCOs already of different kinds and this is the last one. This is actually the first oscillator I built in this process and it's the one that started it all. It's the reverse avalanche VCO uh, and it began, this whole journey began with me watching Look Mom No Computer when he did this VCO and he actually did a hundred of them and that got me started thinking that you should be able to make these simple modules and make a whole modular system that you can start using so it was the first module I built and because it's so simple I made three of them directly uh, there are two of them here, there's one on the workbench somewhere. However, they had qu it had quite a lot of flaws, uh, uh, which gave me grief a long time during the process of the other modules. Among the first things I didn't think of when I built it was that it didn't have CV, and uh, adding it wasn't as simple as it can be to many of the other modules that you've seen me adding before. Also the volume was really low. So here's a sound example. So this is a module where I've added a, an amplifier on and this is how it was from the beginning. And that was a lot of trouble when trying to figure out why uh, VCAs and and uh, filters and stuff like that didn't work. So anyway, after lots of fiddling about I did get them to a, a working condition and uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today and also uh, CV was done with Vectrols which will nicely segue ourselves into the next day the v, uh, where we're going to build VCAs. More about that later. So over the week I've learned really loads of things uh, which helped me fix these uh, as we moved along. And yes I know I said I did all these in one day but tweaks were made during the week. Also when uh, f seeing stuff on the internet and doing some research you always end up everything changes on the internet all the time. So during this week and a few weeks after uh, when I was going to do this post production someone actually made a reverse avalanche VCO which was uh, v uh, control voltage controllable or CV controllable. And it even had some kind of exponential CV control. Uh, so we'll take a look at that as well. I haven't built that, but I think it's interesting that someone during my build process actually built uh, a better one. Uh, so it is on my build list, but it's not built today. A very nice thing with this VCO is compared to the other ones is we are actually moving away from square waveforms. We have a triangle before uh, in the AC VCO. Uh, this one has, let's call it a ramp or saw something, it's, uh, or a reverse avalanche maybe, which goes up and then abruptly down. So it's a bit harsher sound, which is nice when uh, working with filters and stuff like that. And it's always nice to have many waveforms to choose between. And as I said, it is CV controllable. So let's go through the parts list and then let's build some. I've added both the Kesutronics Avalanche VCO and the reverse avalanche VCO which I built uh, from Look Mom No Computer uh, and also the Vectral VCA which is important here. 
because if you want CV you need to add a vectoral VCA for each VCO to this one uh, so that is uh, important to know and also if you want the switch for the high and low capacitors uh, values then you need to add that as well it's not in the final price here uh, Kerry Wong, this site is a good site if you want to read about reverse avalanche oscillators. Uh, there's lots of stuff written there. Um, build one for the waveform and for the practice with the v uh, Vactrol. Um, if you want better CV, if you want that exponential CV curve, then you should probably build the Cassotronics. And when it comes to price, uh, how much it costs to build, this costs four and a half dollars, this one costs seven. But if you want CV in this, you also need to build the Vactrol VCA. It's the same price for the Reverse Avalanche VCO with CV as with the Cassotronics Avalanche VCO. And you have some jacks, some pots, one jack, one pot actually, and... Uh, so this one uses the BC337 and this one uses 2N3904 and it's got many because of the exponential converter and the uh, output uh, buffer. So let's look at some schematics and building it. If we begin with uh, the design by Look Mom No Computer, he actually did three different ones or he, he suggested three different ones uh, and here I missed output there's an output up there so the oscillator core is the transistor uh, with a capacitor uh, he also ha added an LED for visual effect what I did, I changed the transistor to a BC337 because the one he chose was quite hard to get and quite expensive compared to the BC337 which also was very low oscillator voltage uh, limit. So this is just the VCO, sorry, the oscillator with and here you uh, set the frequency I then did the seg so I did three of them so I, I did all three uh, here I added a switch so I could change the capacitor value and this gives two different frequency ranges also controlled by the potentiometer over here and finally he did this one also where he added a potentiometer and a capacitor on this end here on the output to ground and this is a low pass filter kind of I, I, I did add this and I removed that later on I want the filtering in a separate module but a very simple low pass filter but as I said this isn't voltage controllable. You can't really put a CV input here. I tried that and that did not work because you need the 12 volts or else it won't oscillate. So instead when you have when you only have resistance as the means to change the frequency or, or whatever value then there is a circuit called a Vectrol. Here's the schematics again. Uh, I drew it up in ECEDA, as I talked about in the last episode. Um, so we can follow this a bit better. So a Vectrol is technically a container with a, an LED and a an, uh, light sensitive resistor in it. And what you do is you, on the CV input, that is just a connection between the input and ground past an L the LED in the Vectrol. 
which then shines on the light sensitive resistor, which then changes the value. And we put this in parallel with the potentiometer, and that makes us being able to change the value on the potentiometer and also via CV. Now I'll go, I'll make a vectoral in the next episode because that is its own module. It's super simple, but you just have to wait until the next episode uh, until you can uh, put this in place. You can also buy these. Uh, they are quite expensive, so it's actually cheaper to make them yourself. And then the second problem that the output from this one, from this circuit, is really, really low. So then from the output of the oscillating circuit, I added a buffer amplifier uh, circuit. So a TL072, which I just used half of it, and three resistors and one capacitor on the, from the output to the positive input. And then we get a, an amplified signal out here. So this is the final design uh, which I did in, uh, with my reverse avalanche VCOs. Now let's take a look at the Cassutronics approach. So here's the schematics for the Cassutronics reverse avalanche VCO. And you have the oscillator core here. Uh, and he uses two N3904s instead, uh, and this and such. And actually, so here's the core, and then he did an exponential converter and a much nicer uh, circuit over here, which takes care of the CV input and the uh, frequency range, and also a offset. And this is a much nicer approach, uh, which gives you... Uh, it's not perfect, but it's quite good exponential control. And then you have the oscillator circuit, and he also has an output buffer. I did try just to build this one uh, and add to my previous design, but this one was actually lower in volume than the one uh, than the buffer slash amplifier I did, so I kept my amplifier. This one could although be louder because he uses a completely different transistor uh, which probably also affects the volume. Building just the oscillator core of, of my design takes about 20 minutes, so the three VCOs I did, I put uh, about an hour in not counting the uh, vectoral, which I added later, and also the output buffer, which is also a very fast build, 10 minutes or something like that. The front panel design for the reverse avalanche VCO, the simple one we I built first, it looks like this. So here's the LED and a rate knob. Then we have the vectoral in here, with uh, a CV amount uh, pot and a an LED. And this is also one of those things that I did two different kinds of. So I actually removed the LED from the vectoral in the second one. It's not... Uh, this is an LED that is outside of the vectoral in series with the vectoral. So it's not needed. I'll discuss that in the next episode. CV in to the vectoral and the output from the oscillator. And the Cassutronics, he, in his design, he only had a rate knob, CV in and output in a kind of a different layout than this. Uh, I, If I'm going to make it, I'm going to see if I can add an LED or else it's just to remove that one, and it's like that. And here is the final result. The back side with the three different PCBs, and the front, and this is the red one, so it's the first one I built. And here you see it in the rack together with the second one in the white panel. The black mark is I 
removed half a centimeter or one HP on each after this and instead of the CV amount LED I added the switch to switch capacitors to set different frequencies and here you hear it in action And with this we are done with day one. I hope this was a better narrative way that it's easier to follow when there's only one module in one day. I'm leaving the reverse avalanche VCOs hanging with the Vectral thing but that is because a Vectral is so versatile and will be much more suitable in its own episode. But with this, uh, we now have four different modules uh, with oscillators, whereof three of them are voltage controllable. Tomorrow they're all voltage controllable when we've made the Vectral. And uh, yeah, the red one, this one does not fit in. And therefore I am giving it away, as I've said many times now, on my Patreon. Once I have 10 subscribers or not subscribers, Patreons. Uh, I'm going to have a giveaway for this one. And uh, so my color scheme in my uh, modular system won't be affected by this one yet. Yeah, so see you tomorrow now uh, for day number two when we are making VCAs and we're beginning with the Vectral. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you the, press the bell button so you know when the next video comes out. And of course, like this video. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye.